provide feedback on two development applications related to the EDP within the last two and a half months. The CBA is a volunteer organization with a low threshold for capacity. We should have been consulted on this process. Also, unlike the community plans, the EDP is lacking in the rigor of community consultation. There's two more of these that are really, really worthwhile, but Council and Mayor, you have the letter. We feel these seven points are significant enough to warrant a moratorium on the bylaw until such time as a good bylaw can be redeveloped with accurate maps, evidence-based science, good community consultation, good information to landowners, and training, better enforcement, and, and, and not so much hardship. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate much. that. Thank you. Anybody uh, got number 70? Okay, here we go. tonight. Um, Bev Inslee, 4909 Cordova Bay Road. Um, and yes, my, vo my voice counts. I live with my husband in the same residence and uh, I vote as well. Individual votes. Um, I want to voice my concerns regarding the EDPA bylaw and also a re request. Um, this is a reminder that I have already requested removal from the EDPA of my property. I want to also emphasize the ridiculous irony here today. We've had a registered professional biologist affirming that there are no sensitive species on our property that has been disregarded. Um, we are already a steward of the ocean. You're preaching to the converted, the EDPA to us on the waterfront, the beachfront, our neighbors is a waste of time. I have suffered financial loss and hardship as a result of poor direction from Saanich staff. Um, it's ironic, this is poor planning. In this venue, um, you probably could have thought of a better place like a rec center, um, Saanich uh, Commonwealth Place, huge venue, Cedar Hill, um, rec center, huge venue. We could have accommodated a lot more people here. The EDPA places emphasis on plants and ecosystems. This disregards people and how they enjoy this community. I myself am an avid runner, an avid open water swimmer, and an avid cyclist. Um, Sandwich beaches and major recreational areas like Elk and Beaver Lake are polluted with E. coli, blue-green algae, and weeds. These beaches and lakes are in the EDPA. The EDPA bylaw is also a distraction to the real issues like healthy, safe recreational areas, for example, beaches and lakes. Sandwich staff and council have put an emphasis on plants rather than on people and citizens. Finally, I sense an incongruency and something just seems awry. There just doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to fit with our community and this has been placed in, in a way that the view, the end in view doesn't seem clear to me. I have a question that I want Saanich Council to address to the citizens of Saanich. What is the plan and the end in view for the waterfront, the beaches, especially the beaches, the parks and lakes in Saanich? Limiting development is important. I believe we have to, that has to be managed properly and so is preserving the environment. I, I feel very strongly against biases towards certain companies with respect to purchasing um, native plants. And I also want to say, um, June Pretzer, I am going to be around in a long time. And I hope to live a long and healthy life, but I hope not to be killed by poison in the water. And um, and in our lakes and on the beach. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>
71, 72, 73. 74. Yeah, I think that, unless there's a 73 that's going to pop up. No, 74. Mr. Mayor, Council, my name is Robert Boyd, and my wife and I live at 4173 Linfield Crescent, adjacent to a former cattle feedlot. Our property, and I'd like to thank you for having no cows this summer. <laughs> Our property is in the buffer zone of a neighboring undeveloped lot full of, full of un invasive species that has been designated as an environmentally sensitive area. That's the neighboring lot. Our lots are separated by two meter wide concrete sidewalk. If our property itself was designated as an ESA, we could decide to go to the expense required to request it be removed from the EDPA. But that is not in our hands because we're just in the buffer zone. However, being in the buffer zone means being in the EDPA, with all the inherent risks to our property's value. This is a particular concern as we are just beginning our retirement, which, even though I'm at the ripe age of 66, I hope to still be in our house 20 years from now. I've had many satisfying encounters with Saanich staff on various matters, but not in this case. I came away from the first open house feeling that the staff person I spoke with was close-minded and not open to any criticism on the appropriateness of the manner in which this bylaw was implemented and how it's being enforced. To me, their explanations defied reason and I left feeling that it had not been listened to. I'm supportive of the concept of EDPA, but not as implemented in the current bylaw. I fully support the proposals of the Senate citizens for responsible EDPA, and would like to thank them for their hard work on our behalf. They are truly good neighbors, and I hope Sandwich Council takes advantage of their contribution to finding a constructive, a constructive way ahead in this matter. I'd also like to refer to a point one previous speaker made about the EDPA and the current council. It was implied that because the council was voted in, it was some sort of a um, supportive, it was because of the support that had been given to the EDPA and people voted you in because of that. But my, to my recollection during the election, the municipal election campaign, this issue did not come up at all. And that during that time, I was not at all, my wife and I were not aware that our property was um, included in this. One thing I'd also like to say is I do think there's a quite a disincentive here for people to manage their property in an ecologically sensitive way. In my own case, I have given quite a bit of thought to doing some Gary Oak um, a restoration project on our, on our property, on actually on the, around a tree, a you know, Gary Oak tree, away from the buffer zone. But I must admit that those plans are currently not they're not going to happen until this issue is resolved because I don't want to start something on my property that's going to be affect, um, it's going to be encumbered. I want to do it because I think it's a good thing to do. In closing, I urge Council to adopt the very reasonable evidence-based recommendations of the Senate citizens for responsible EPA. Thank you. I think somebody's point is 75. Good evening. 
Costco. Uh, sorry, uh, the horse throw here tonight. Uh, 4355 Gordon Head Road, um, living next door to Chris and Charmaine. Um, my wife Brenda and I bought our property 10 years ago. We were overseas at the time from BC, Victoria, back in the early 90s. Uh, and uh, this was going to be our, our retirement home, still is. Um, in the process, started a little more than a year ago of uh, coming up with plans and um, a proposal to build on our, our property, which is uh, not quite the size of, of Chris and Charmaine's, but pretty close, it's almost an acre and a half. Uh, of which, uh, rough, rough numbers, 75% of that acre, acre and a half is uh, affected by the uh, environmental protection uh, uh, situation. <clears throat> which then forced us to come up with a um, design which for the new house, which basically sits on the existing footprint, uh, which I wasn't completely opposed to, but I was hoping to actually build a little bit further down the slope, but uh, we were limited in the area that was left. Um, as a consequence of uh, developing the plans, well, it became evident that we couldn't comply with current bylaws on setbacks from Gordon Head Road, which then forced us to go through a variance procedure to uh, build within that setback, etc. That was successful, but you know it's been almost uh, a year and a quarter um, to get in a lot of money get to the point where now we can actually go ahead and build another obstacle. I guess the bottom line is, uh, you know, we are very much in favor of, you know, protecting the environment. Our, our son is a, has a master's degree in uh, environmental science and, you know, we uh, nurtured that and encouraged him to get into the field. It's just the, um, the current, uh, you know, situation and how the, the whole policy and bylaw was rolled out, uh, you know, it was definitely not democratic, we were not consulted, it was just imposed. And as others have spoken about it, um, it just seems to be a bit arbitrary. Uh, you know, in the process of our development, I've had to hire a, an arborist who's out bit out with the property and whatnot, and just, just a, an excerpt out of his report. Um, Gary oak trees on the property, I have Gary oaks, I have one cedar, and we have some pines. Uh, Gary oak trees are stunted, windswept, salt burned, and are showing the effects of the severe growing conditions on this site. Uh, these trees are not of high value specimens that, that offer any unique benefits or function. Okay, that's a, a very jaded uh, view, and he's hired by me. He's probably thinking, okay, I may want to disturb these trees. In fact, you know, we, we do have to in, in the process. But it just gives you. It, uh, what I, what, what's written there is actually true. I mean, if you go to the site, you will see that it's, um, no matter what we do out there, it's, it is a very wet, windswept site. It's right next to Gordon Head Park, which there are a lot of invasive species in that park, which do migrate into our property, um, which we'll have to deal with when we're living there. I guess bottom line is, uh, you know, the bylaw in its current form, it has some good points, no question about it, but it just seems totally arbitrary. And I think it definitely needs to be revisited uh, by some uh, professionals. Uh, uh, ground truth, definitely, and uh, some some sense made made um, you know the current situation. And then back to the carrot carrot and stick. You know, no one's successful with a, with a stick approach. There needs to be you know some realization that properties that are within the EBDA are are going to be affected. I mean, I do invest in, in real estate, and you know, I, I would personally steer clear of a property that is where this clouds hang over it right now. Um, some of the other municipalities in the area, which have beautiful properties, that would be they would give you my money um, right now. But uh, that's all I had to say. I just um, wanted you know to encourage the council to to just revisit the whole bylaw. Thank you. Sir? Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Anne Strother. I live on La Corno Lane, which is a very short little piece of street in Saanich. And I'm not speaking to the waterfront houses because 
they were automatically in the EDPA. What I'm speaking to you about is four ponds on this street that the stats flipped down on, on the map and said, oh, those must be kind of in a line. It must be an underground aquifer, therefore they should be in the EDPA to protect the aquifer. Um, I, I do remember in 2012 seeing the letter come and thought, oh, this is kind of crazy, but I guess someone will come out and look at it. So this year when I saw it in the newspaper, I thought, oh, maybe no one's going to come. So I phoned and one of the staff came out to look at my, my pond. And she said, oh, indeed, it's a cement pond. It has a pipe going into it that comes from my weeding tackles around the house. She said, hmm, this is of no ecological significance. I said, right. She said, so, you know, what do you want to do? Because if you want to do anything, we'll pass it for you, you know, when it comes to council, or it comes to, to us. And I said, no, I, I'd like to be taken off the list. And she said, well, we, we don't actually do that. And I said, well, of the four ponds, they're all, they're all of, if not cement, they're pushed earth. And they were made because there's a lot of springs on our piece of the world. You know the QA with it's all it's wet, wet, wet. Well we're part of that. So there's a lot of springs up the back and it's always just said they're up the back. We don't know where they are. But they do produce water and some of us collect them in ponds. So my question to you is, is there actually a way of becoming out of the EDPA? Is there actually a process? Because the staff member said well, you can, you can go on the list to be in the first group that comes off, which is very nice. But I'd like to know if my neighbors are going to be in that as well. Or is it a system thing? And since I just found out that there's four more neighbors that are in the buffer zones of those ponds, and therefore they're now in the EDPA, will they automatically come out as well? Thank you very much if you could answer that. Twenty minutes left. I think we're on number seventy-seven now. All right, moving right along. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council. My name is Peter Foreman, and it's a pleasure to be here at this meeting. I'm very glad it's taking place. Um, I'm not going to cover again the ground that's been tilled by most of the speakers who've been here this evening. I fully support most of the comments that have been made. I would just like to uh, mention a few things, though and say up front that I do care about the environment and I think we should do all we can to protect it but I'm not in favor of measures which are arbitrary and discriminatory and apply to some people and don't apply to others and I'd like to make sure that anything we do do is based on a full understanding of the scientific facts. One of the things that's often talked about is th are things natural? And uh, it's sort of implied that environmentally sensitive areas are natural. Well, I live on Parker Avenue in Cordova Bay, and there is nothing whatsoever natural about Parker Avenue today. <clears throat> it must have been natural, obviously, before the first people settled along there. But its natural state would be to be an almost vertical sand cliff, which is being constantly eroded at the base by wave action from winter storms and the land in its natural state would be retreating so that the waterfront that I enjoy on the east side of Parker Avenue in a few decades would end up on the west side of Parker Avenue and my lot would be underwater. So let's forget about natural. Um, ecologically sensitive area. I got the message from Saanich Hall and it was the first I ever heard about EDPAs after the bylaw was in, in force and it described my lot as an ecologically, environmentally sensitive area. I mean, I just about split my sides laughing because I'm embarrassed by the condition of the high bank waterfront on my lot. Um, some of my neighbors have non-natural, professionally landscaped gardens that go down to the sea full of non-native plants, and I admire what they've done. My, my lot is more natural than theirs, but it's kind of neglected. And the Brambles are trying to take it over, and I'm in a constant battle with them. And by the way, I've hired a contractor to come in in a few weeks and remove a bunch of Brambles. So there is nothing worth protecting there. 
it really needs improvement. But in order to make improvements, I have to go through the environmental development process process now. I did used to have to do that, but since this bylaw came into effect, any changes I want to make to improve this sorry state of affairs will in fact require a permit and need to go and jump through all those hurdles. It's actually a deterrent against my making any improvements that are sorely needed. The other thing is, I think as a landowner, it should be my decision to make the stewardship decisions as to how the land will be looked after. And whilst I should not be committing crimes and offences against the, like, the environment, it is quite proper to have laws and bylaws that saying thou shalt not, uh, thou shalt not put toxic chemicals into the soil, thou shalt not destroy Gary oak trees and things like that. To actually set up a bureaucratic system that says before you can make any improvements, you have to go through a bureaucratic system to get a permit to make those improvements, whereas other people don't have to make, go through these uh, systems to make improvements to their land, is grossly unfair. It infringes with whatever sovereignty I'm supposed to enjoy on my private property. So I wish the council would uh, reconsider this bylaw and uh, come up with a new and more fair bylaw, and perhaps bylaws that would apply to everybody in Saanich, and not just 2,300 or 2,400 unfortunate souls. Thank you. Thank you. unusual for me. I, I don't normally go to council meetings or speak at these kinds of events or write for the papers. I just don't do that sort of thing. I'm a kind of a quiet guy. Um, and for us, uh, my wife and I live on five wooded acres in rural Saanich. Uh, we are only peripherally affected by the EDPA, just a couple of corners of our property are in that and, and that's in the buffer zone as well. Um, but I'm speaking here tonight, like so many others, uh, because I'm incensed by the way this, is, uh, this has uh, been going on. It makes my blood boil. Um, I spent most of today looking at the background to this bylaw and how it's come about and what the logic is uh, that it's based on. Um, I come to the conclusion that there are two fundamental problems and I think you've heard a lot about both of these this evening already. Um, one of those problems is what has been done and the other problem is how it's been done. So there's a problem with the bylaw and there's clearly some kind of problem with savage staff. And I don't know what that is, how those dynamics work, but there seems to be a lack of accountability, there's arrogance, there's denial that there's a problem, and all this other stuff that you've heard about tonight. So I, I looked back and found that there was, a, there was a study that had been done by the Feds in 2002 on these, um, these uh, sensitive ecosystem uh, inventories, and there was one done for East Vancouver Island and, um, and Victoria. Um, and that document said the purpose of sensitive economic inventory project is to identify remnants of at-risk and ecologically fragile terrestrial ecosystems and to encourage land use decisions that will ensure the continued integrity of these ecosystems. Now, this, was, this was 10, 15 years ago. Um, there's a couple of obvious problems with this straight away. The first is that ecosystems come and go. Uh, that's how evolution works. Uh, so we don't expect them all to survive and we expect that others will thrive. Um, so let's not try to pick them all, let's not pursue a lost cause, let's pick our battles. Uh, let's recognise that things move on. Um, and then that thing to encourage land use decisions, it does not mean overlaying that inventory, which was presented as a, as a report and as a map, overlaying that inventory onto Sanjay's GIS maps and calling it a done deal, which is what it appears to have happened. So when people say, where were the boots on the ground, I'm not really surprised that there weren't any or weren't many because I suspect that that map was taken, overlaid on the GIS, and that was about it, with the exception of someone taking a boat trip off part of the coast. Um, so there appears to be no thoughtful analysis uh, of what appears to be uh, some hundreds or thousand locations in Saanich. Um, there's just been a simplistic uh, wholesale adoption of the 2002 maps. Under the subheading of maps in this Ministry of Environment document, uh, it says, and I quote, because the SEI is based on air photos and mapped at 1 to 20,000 scale, we recommend field verification of SIE, sorry, SEI polygon boundaries and detailed ecological assessments by a professional biologist before land use decisions are made. So a couple of problems here. Were the boundaries ever verified? 
I suspect not. They were just on, on GIS. Uh, were ecological assessments done by professional biologists? Uh, again, I suspect not. I think that this recommendation and the, for the associated costs has simply been passed on to the property owner uh, when, they, when the property owner wants to do something in the future. So again, uh, wholesale adoption of unverified data. Um, when I asked Stanley staff about the EDPA on my property at one of the open houses, the letter I received back stated, it is unlikely that the map has visited your property specifically. If you feel the mapping is not accurate, staff will be pleased to visit your property and correct the mapping. In brackets, there is no fee for this. Well, that's very generous. But I should not have to invite Stanley, Stanley staff onto my property for what will inevitably turn into a fishing expedition in order to demonstrate that their assumptions are incorrect. On the contrary, the onus, in my opinion, is on Sandwich staff to substantiate their assumptions and to bear the cost of doing so. Further down in these Ministry of Environment um, documents under Sensitive Ecosystems Inventory Mapping Method, again I quote, the primary objective of SEI mapping is to provide information for the conservation of ecological diversity, particularly the most vulnerable and rare elements in the landscape. So I would like to know from Sandwich specifically what these most vulnerable and rare elements are on our property or affecting our property. Because all we got was a general statement that said to the effect that it's classified as woodland. 